Tonight we are talking about fasting. Fasting seems to be quite popular uh, in society at the moment. Not the Christian or the religious kind of fasting, but the, uh, what is it, the 16-8 intermittent fasting. Now we both do that. Uh, you started off the trend, which is a surprise to us all. <laughs> and uh, I didn't start it, I well, no, joined in. Within like our kind of staff team, oh, okay. you, you were the, the forerunner speaking of its benefits. And the idea is that you don't eat for 16 hours and then you have a window of eight hours in which you do eat. And the reason we do that is because there's lots of health benefits. So it's supposed to be good if, like me, you've got high blood pressure in bringing it down. It's supposed to help your metabolism. It's supposed to help your mood. It's supposed to help if you're trying to lose weight. Lots of different helpful reasons why intermittent fasting is good. For some people. For some people. Do you know of people that it's not good for? Uh, I don't think it suits every metabolism. And if you've got other health conditions, yes. then you shouldn't do it. Yes. And so I'm, not, I, I'm wary now after the skip incident. <laughs> of telling everybody to go out and do intermittent do, yeah. fasting. It's, it's worked for me, that's all I can say. Okay. With all of these things, you need to assess your health and talk to your doctor. Uh, and we'll say that as well when we get on now to talking about Christian fasting. So fasting is out there. It's in people's vocabulary. There's a kind of understanding about it. Just as we start tonight, tell us what you think Christian fasting is because it's different yeah i mean I'm, i i want to say i'm no expert um my understanding of fasting as we as we see it in the new testament is it's a period of self-denial typically in the bible of food but doesn't need to be food It's a period of self-denial uh, of in order to uh, enable us perhaps to um show to god that that our uh, that we love him and that we are not uh, slaves to everything else. Uh, it can be a, a time of purification, it can be a time of reflection, but it's going through a period of time of giving up something, uh, maybe 12 hours, 24 hours of food, or it, it's broadened out to other things. And what we're doing is we're giving ourselves time to think, time to pray, and we're removing perhaps things that dominate that day that otherwise crowd out God. Mm -hmm. So that's Christian fasting. What is the difference between Christian fasting and other kinds of uh, religious fasting? I mean, we've just had Ramadan. Uh, what would you say the difference is between Christian fasting and well, other spiritual religious fasting? As I talk to my friends who are, who are Muslims and friends who are Hindus, I think there are lots of different understandings why they fast, so I wouldn't want to generalize, but, in the, but there are some of the things that we're very clear about as Christians. We don't fast in order to gain God's approval. Mm -hmm. we, he already loves us. We're already uh, forgiven through Jesus. We're already uh, offered relationship with him. So we're not fasting in order to get right with mm -hmm. God or in order to... Um, earn in some sense or some way God's love. And it's not a requirement to be cleansed or forgiven. In other words, we believe that confession of simply saying to God, Lord, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong, that that is uh, sufficient uh, for allowing us to be forgiven by God. So it's not a, a means by which we have to be cleansed or we have mm -hmm. to be forgiven. Uh, so it's it's really something that we offer God rather than something that he demands or expects of us. And it's not something that we're required to offer, but it's something that from time to time for some of us, it's a good thing to do mm -hmm. to help us get closer to him. But it's not a requirement that um, in any sense uh, affects how he sees us or how we, he loves us. I think throughout church history, as you look at it and bring it up to today, there have been different moments when this whole idea of fasting has been more prominent than others. And if I look at my upbringing, I was brought up in, in a Church of England church, went to church until I was 13, then gave up on it and then became a Christian just before my 18th birthday. But in those first 13 years, I was probably too young, but I don't remember ever being taught about fasting. Mm. 
then became a Christian, went to Bible college when I was 21, something like that. And it was only there, because they made us once a term have a day of prayer and fasting, that this whole idea of fasting came to my attention. And even then, I remember, this is a confession of a church leader, I remember what would happen. We would fast for the day, and then in the evening, we'd all go out for this amazing meal and eat as much as we possibly could because we hadn't eaten all day. And that seemed to be the, the goal of the day. So you don't eat so much. You spend a little time praying, and then you can stuff your face in did the you evening. Not, did that make you feel ill the next day or through the night? I've got a very great capacity to eat. <laughs> We've talked about my, my biscuit eating and other eating before. Because the only times I've, any time I've ever did that, I had such huge indigestion <laughs> through the <laughs> night. I thought, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> the only time that happened was when, I did, when I've done slightly longer fasts. So if I fasted for three or more days, when I eat again, I can't eat much and I have that issue. So I've learned not to eat in the evening after doing more than three days fasting, but to gently eat a little bit during the day. I've never fasted for three days. I've okay. never fasted for, for more than a day. Okay. Well, we can come on and talk about that, and we can talk wow. about the benefits and, and why and, and everything else, because I think it's really interesting what, what drives mm. people mm. to fast. And so I think probably for our generation and today's generation, there's a little bit of teaching on fasting, but it, it's not majorly out there. There's, there's more, um, what's the word I want, emphasis that's placed on the Christian disciplines right now. Do you want to just explain what I mean when I say the word Christian disciplines? So I, I think that uh, we've always balanced things that what we call grace and that God loves us and that we are precious to him and that nothing we can do can make him love us more. That's one part of it. There's another side of, of our of walk with God of saying, I need to in some way deal with um, the sort of pro, uh, propensity of my body to be lazy mm. and to just do what I feel like, which ultimately, you know, you stay in bed and you eat loads. And mm. so there's an element of trying to develop things that are a little bit harder, but are beneficial. Um, so in our culture, things like exercise and so on, so, uh, are maybe not what you feel like doing, but they're good for you. Mm. So the, the, new, the, the early church uh, and the monastics, so monks and nuns, really developed this idea that there is value in learning some things that you do that are not necessarily, you get up in the morning and think, hey, that's what I really want to do but that it, 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 it enables you to not be ruled by your body or sometimes what the Bible calls the flesh, mm -hmm. not be ruled by that, but to allow God to shape your temperament and your personality. Mm -hmm. So fasting is one of those things where you say, God, because I want, I want to spend the time I would otherwise cook or eat, I want to spend that time praying. Or God, because... I'm aware that I'm just doing everything I want. I want to go through a little bit of discomfort in order to listen to you and pray and seek you. Um, so other spiritual disciplines, solitude, which is connected to that, so withdrawing for a period of time and, and just being still, that's one mm. I find much easier than, than fasting, I'll be mm. honest. I, could, mm -hmm. I easily do three days solitude. In fact, did that last week, and I can mm -hmm. do that regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just withdrawing from the noise of everything. Uh, um, my mind's gone blank about other, other spiritual disciplines. Give me a few others. Well, there's this really good book by uh, Richard uh, Foster called Celebration of Discipline. Yeah. We've both read it, yeah. or you've listened to it. On I the read old... it a long, Did long you? time ago. It was very influential You actually me. read it, a book? Yeah, in the days when I used to read books. The thing is, though, you're very well uh, read in a different kind of way because you listen to lots of podcasts and you listen to lots of audio books. Yeah. So you won't necessarily pick a book up, but you'll listen to it. As I'm walking, yeah. Absolutely. So it's just different ways of learning. So in this, um, he's got different sections. So he's got the inward disciplines. So he's got meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. 
Right. Then he's got the outward disciplines, simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. And then he says there are corporate disciplines, things that we do with other people. So confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. Um, this is a really good book. I would highly recommend yeah. it. Uh, he's, he's an awesome author. There is a, a more modern version of this written by his son, where he, he grew up with all of this and he, he kind of wrestled with it a little bit and um, felt that his life was perhaps dominated a little bit by the disciplines. So he looked at doing today's disciplines. So he looked at what would my life look like in today's world rather than my dad's world? What are the things that I need to withdraw from? Might that be social media? Might that be, you know, lots of different things? So uh, his son, another foster, has written another book looking more at it uh, from today's perspective. But it's quite popular. The, these things, it's not like a, a fad or what have you, but these are means in which we draw closer to God. Yeah. It helps us to connect with him rather than losing that connection and the busyness and the muddledness of life. There's so much that's hitting us. There's a sense that the word discipline isn't an exciting word. It makes you think of, I have to do it. But it's a way of helping us to stop and to breathe and to breathe God in. And they're well worth pursuing and exploring. One of the things about that book that was really good is that I tried most of them. And you work out, like, I couldn't be on my own for three days. I would go absolutely spare. So that's not for me. But there are times when it's right for me to say, I need to step back from everybody and just find solitude and be with God, not for three days. But there are other things that are far more temperamentally me and they work and it's about finding those things and so fasting is one of them but it's not as I've said greatly talked about today it's not something that everybody is necessarily encouraged to do and yet we see in Jesus's time there was this assumption if we look at his interaction with his followers he didn't say if you fast he said when you fast mm. so was it far more prevalent in the Bible, and what did people used to fast about in the Bible? It was much more prevalent. They would fast for a number of different reasons. It might be an expression of grief. It might be an expression of, uh, of saying to God they were sorry. Yeah. It might be a, a, an expression of seeking what God was trying to say to them. Um, it might have been uh, um, uh, an expression of asking God's help mm -hmm. and for him to guide them mm -hmm. and for them to hear his voice. Uh, all kinds of ways in which they fasted. And as you say, Jesus assumed that people would fast. What he said that was interesting is that he told people to not par parade it, not mm -hmm. to boast about it, mm -hmm. but just to do it quietly. So that's an important aspect, that it's not something we try and gain everybody's... Um, praise for is something mm -hmm. we do quietly one of the other things he did was he uh, was challenged when it appeared that the disciples were eating when they shouldn't have been eating mm -hmm. and then he sort of drew away from that sort of legalistic thing that you have to conform to the time that everybody else is fasting so and he withdrew drew for 40 days uh, where he didn't eat during the day it would appear and that seems to have been at his own choice, at his own timing, rather than you have to do it because everybody else does it. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that, that he was doing. And I think for us, it's really important to have the ability and the times when we say, I'm going to live the day a little bit different to normally because I want to make this day a day for God, a day to reflect. And that may be about food, but I think it can be about other things. Um, so, like for me, three or four days without speaking to anyone, um, that's not really a sacrifice for me. I find <laughs> that quite... I really find it spiritually developing. I really sense God. Mm -hmm. In a sense, I'm fasting from contact with people. Yeah. I think a, a much more probably necessary thing for people is to fast from social media, to fast from your phone for a day or two and just say, look, I'm, I, and, and we say, well, that's too difficult. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the thing is saying to God, I love you enough to do something difficult and replace 
what my body is crying out for and to replace it with prayer and to replace mm -hmm. it with meditation, with thinking and, and reflecting mm -hmm. on you, God, rather than just going through the day from one thing that we want to do to another and stepping mm -hmm. back and saying, okay, I'm going to pull her back from just doing what I want and I want to give you time. So fasting from the phone, from TV, from uh, things that are... Uh, that grab your attention and therefore they're not in themselves bad but there's a time through season of the year of saying I pull back from that to give God extra time and lots of people do Lent I and mean, we, we joke and whatever I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of doing Lent because you have to do Lent but I'm a huge, I think concept of saying to God I'm going to give something up but if it were me, I'd start the day after Lent and do it 40 days in the day just to be rebellious and not to do it because <laughs> everybody else says you've got to do it this time. <laughs> For me, I try not to um, use the terminology, and I know what you're saying, give something up for God. Mm. For me, it's about how can I better connect with God? Yeah. And if I look at why I fast and the times that I've fasted the most, sometimes it's been because I felt distant from God or I felt, okay, I really haven't prioritised you, God. I've gone a little bit awry and I want to get back on track with you. Mm. Or it might be that I want God to speak to me more or speak to me. Maybe there's, there's something that uh, I'm wrestling with, I'm trying to work out. Maybe it's a life decision or something else. And there's a sense of, actually, this is serious. Mm -hmm. God, this, uh, this needs my full attention. Uh, and how can I best, uh, for me, invest more time in my day in connecting with you, God? Because my routine is normally to have my quiet time when I wake up. Uh, and I easily just bumble into the rest of the day, um, just forgetting. I, I, I don't always find it easy to be that anchored and that connected in my relationship with God. And recently I've been trying to anchor time with God into my meal times because that's really important for me. When, I, when I'm doing the 16-8 fast, lunchtime becomes a meal that I look forward to because I've not eaten for 16 hours. And I thought, okay, I'm, that's an, an immovable thing in my life. Maybe I need to start tying in my times with God with some of these immovable things that I know I'm always going to eat my lunch. So therefore, I'm always going to spend time with God before that. And fasting's a little bit like that for me. So the times that I don't eat when I'm fasting for God, not intermittently fasting, are times that are then set aside extra time for God. It's like, I'm serious. I need you. I, I want to get to know you. And there's no sense that I used to think that fasting was twisting God's arm you know if I fast you'll do this for me mm. and as I've got a bit older and not so much wiser it's just dawned on me that it's relationship it's about me and him it's about me just being in his presence receiving from him sometimes you know he, he won't say anything sometimes there's just a sense of peace it's rare that I'll get a blinding revelation from him and if I'm fasting for a an answer for something. He won't write me a letter or type me something in my brain that says, Kath, this is what to do. But it's a journey and a process mm. where at some point I get to the, the point of, I know what the right thing mm. to do is. But for some people, they see fasting more as a, if I do this, God will give me mm. this. I've heard of that before. We're going to pray and fast because then... Mm. God will do it. It's not ideal, is it? No, we can't, you can't manipulate God. Thankfully, God is God, and he does what's rest, best and right, not necessarily what we want. And I don't think you can manipulate God. I, I do think there is an, a real link in that the Bible talks a lot about, uh, uh, or he uses the analogy of hungering after mm. God. Mm. Seek first the kingdom, of having a hunger for God. And there is a sense in which fasting is, is us symbolically saying, yeah, I'm hungry mm. for you. I'm, 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 I'm not hungry. I am hungry for food, but I'm hungry for you, God. Mm. And it is definitely true that God responds to that. So I want to have my cake and eat it if I'm allowed to do that. I want to be balanced. I don't believe that we can make God do anything. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that God sometimes says, how much do you want this? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. much does this really matter to you? Is this a yeah. prayer that you pray once and you've forgotten you prayed it? 
Mm-hmm. Or is a pr- this a prayer that you pray every day? And a, there's no rule, there's no slot machine that says you do this, God does that. But I am convinced that there is a, there is a relationship between our hunger for something and God's answer. Not in... And let's clarify that. When that matches what God wants to do. So you say, well, I hunger after a a, a million pounds. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hungry you are for a million pounds. (laughs) Uh, You're not going to get it without exploiting somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's where you're hungering for God to do something that you know he wants to do. Build the church. Mm -hmm. uh, Bring somebody you know to faith. Transform a place of darkness. Mm -hmm. Where you... And this is why we pray in the name of Jesus. You're praying what Jesus Mm. would be praying. Mm. So when we want what we know God wants, and we really want it, and we hunger for it, we really want it such that we'll say, look, tomorrow Mm. I'm going to make that the focus of my prayers, Mm. and I'm not going to eat because Mm. I really want to see you do this, God. Mm. It needs to be that which Jesus is asking for. So it's not about me. It's not, I'm, hung, I'm fasting so that you do this for me. It's, I'm fasting so that uh, I, you can see that there's a group of people on earth who really want this. And, and I kind of think it, to me, ties in with where uh, there's a couple of occasions with, with Abraham um, and Moses where, where God, God says, I'm going to do something. And they, they appear to argue with God. And they say, well, look, please don't do that. And he says, well, how many, how many people do you think... And, it's like some people think they cha- that, that Abraham changes God's mind, but it isn't. It's God saying, I need to know you really want this. Mm. I, re- I need to know this is really what you mm. want. And then he says, okay. Mm. And I think God does do that. And he says to his people, is this really what you want? Or is this just a fad that you've thought mm. of today and you'll have forgotten by tomorrow? Mm. And fasting is in that relationship of saying, mm. I really want to see you move in Sutton Coldfield. I really want to see you fill the baptistry. I really mm. want to see you transform my place of work where there is injustice and darkness. Mm. I really want you to use me to, to lead my family and friends to Christ. Those kind of prayers. I think God responds when that's really what we want. And if we're not bothered, he says, okay, I'll move on to somebody who is bothered. Mm. I mean, there's a parable, isn't there, with the persistent widow? Yeah. You know, so again, that's pointing in that direction yeah. that it's not just a... You see, the thing with prayer, it's difficult, isn't it? Mm. Because you have, on the one hand, we say, just come to God and, and say what's on your heart, and that's great. And yet, on the other hand, we're saying, but also there are some times when you need to keep saying it, you need to keep coming back. And it's not about proving and showing that you're worthy of the answer, but there is a sense of, actually, is this what you really, mm. really want? Do you, do you really want me to transform your life or someone else's life? Or, or... I remember being a child and being asked, what do you want for Christmas? And my parents would never take my first answer. Because as a child, it'd be like, oh, well, I want this and I want this. And it would, well, think about it. You know, you think about it and you come up with a list and then we'll, we'll look at yeah. what is it that you really, really want. Because yeah. I could have yeah. listed 500 things that yeah. I wanted. And it wasn't actually until I thought about it. What, what is the one real thing that I want for Christmas? And I suppose this is a kind of what, what God is saying. Yeah, you can pray this prayer and that prayer and that's great. What, what do you want with your life? Yeah. Yeah, And there have been times when us as a church and as individuals, we've done that. And sometimes we've seen God really move and other times we haven't. And that's quite difficult, I think. Of we haven't seen him move in the way we wanted him to move. Absolutely. I was going to say, I, I, I've seen that in the life of a very good friend of mine. We had quite a few days of prayer and fasting for her. She had terminal cancer. And uh, there was this sense that we were united. We were all crying out to God. God, you know, great evangelist, great person, shared her faith at the drop of a hat. Amazing woman. So you think, you like, you, humanly, you look at that and you think, oh, why wouldn't you want her to stay on this earth and win more people for Jesus? Surely that's an earthly yes. But we were looking at it through our earthly uh, perspective. How do you begin to cope with that and, and how do you speak into that kind of situation? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's the curveball. There's the curveball. I, mm. I think 
I think there's two different things I want to try and separate out. Well, the one is, why does someone die yep. young? And that's a huge issue. We've covered that in, our, in mm -hmm. other ones, and I don't want to skip over it, but neither do I, I, I yep. want to say this is the time to, do, to, to really go into depth. It's, we, you know, bad stuff happens because this world is messed up, and mm -hmm. I just believe that in heaven it's, it's sorted out mm -hmm. and it's resolved, and when we've been there 10,000 years, those things are more able to us uh, to deal with yeah and and so that aspect i think that there is a risk for western churches that if we only ever fast for healing that god kind of says is that all you want mm -hmm. and when you start fasting for the town of sutton coalfield to mm -hmm. turn to me when you start fasting there's a passage, uh, that I just pulled it out, um, that's a bit of a challenge in Isaiah, mm -hmm. where they really, really are fasting all the time. Mm -hmm. And he, he kind of says to them, I, I'm not interested in mm -hmm. your fasting because it's all about what you want. Now, praying for healing isn't, I'm not, it's not in the same category, but I think there is a danger if, as a church, that's all we ever fast for. Yeah. Um, he says, is this, the kind of, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reef? His eyes are 58. Uh, is that what you call a fast? And then he says this, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke and set the oppressed free? And he, he's really saying, if you hunger and thirst are for justice and setting those who are trapped, enslaved, downtrodden, the poor and the victims of life, if you hunger for that, you will see more in every other area of life. So the mystery of our friend was very painful. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't want to connect those two mm. things. But when we're talking about fasting, I think we have to fast for more than just healing. So I think there's just two different areas to fast for, aren't there? There's things to do with us. So our connectedness with God, our relationship with God, things that are going on in our lives. Maybe we're struggling with a particular area yeah. of sin. And we're like, God, I've just had this. I need you to, to help me to work through this. Uh, you know, that's that's... So things to do with us like yeah. like that. Yeah. Then there's things that we fast for for other people. So they're kind of like people connected to us. But then there's the whole wider gambit of what's going on in our society and in our world. It's rare that we call the church to pray corporately, isn't it? I can't remember the last time, maybe... For, for something other than an individual crisis. It is rare, and I think this is the dilemma that... I feel that I don't want people to feel this is what I have to do because this is what is being expected of me because then it becomes a religious ritual that is about conforming rather than, mm -hmm. and partly what Isaiah is talking about, it's mm -hmm. not really what you believe in, it's just what everybody else is doing. So I've always been reticent about calling the church to fast and I think I, I certainly would say I do it less than I did because I would rather a church where people choose to fast because they are desperate for something mm -hmm. rather than because Donald's asked them to do it. Mm -hmm. um, now that's a risk and maybe we don't speak about fasting enough. Um, I don't know. We're doing it now. We are. Um, but I just think there is a, a risk when I say everybody fast. That, is that really genuine for some people or is this about conforming and pleasing and doing the right thing? Is there a middle ground? So is there a middle ground where it's not a corporate fast? It's not a saying everybody needs to do this, but more often than not raising up such and such is going to be praying and fasting on this day for India and what's going on there or coronavirus making it known so there, if there are those that think actually I want to I want to get involved in this this is something that's on my heart I want to join in my own way with that then then there's a sense they can do that I don't yeah. know so there yeah. isn't the you all have to do this but if it it piques your interest and there's a little stirring of the spirit thinking yeah actually that's on my yeah, heart too. I think it's a dilemma 
I think I don't think we've got it. I don't think I've got it right. I think I want people to fast as part of their work, their, their walk with God, mm. and to be a regular thing. But I also don't want to know, because again, it goes back to where Jesus says, "Yeah, just if you fast, yeah. don't let everybody know. Just do it." Mm. And so I'm all. It's a dilemma I find. I'm not sure I know the answer. I, we probably haven't encouraged it as much as we could. But on the other hand, yeah, no. Mm, I think that's fair enough. So tell me about three days of fasting. How and why would you do that? Turn the tables. Okay, so I did that with a friend of mine. We, we, just, uh, we were working through this book by Richard Foster. Uh, and just to say that Deb Lydon, our discipleship worker, she has some spare copies of this. So if anybody would like to borrow a copy of Deb, get in touch, qolscbc.org.uk. She's on the end of those. You can talk to her and borrow a copy of it. So what we did was we read a uh, chapter of this a week and uh, we would either read it together or read it independently and then we'd come and talk about it. And what did you think? What did you find helpful? Well, that was a bit weird. And then we would try and enact it, which is why I've had a go at most of these jolly things in here. Just because I thought, let's give it a go. And does it say three days in there? No. So why did you do three days? Okay, so when it comes to fasting, I was um, doing on a Monday, I used to fast on a Monday. That used to be my, my thing. I would, I would fast on a Monday and that was fine. But he talks in there about um, doing slightly longer fasts for different reasons. Um, and so I'd never done more than 24 hours. So I thought, okay, let's still keep it achievable. Let's be sensible. And I had to fit it in before the Alpha meal on a Wednesday night because I felt I couldn't go to Alpha and say, I'm not eating because I'm fasting. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because I'd look like a complete prat in front of a bunch of non-Christians. And, oh, who do you think you are? Oh, get her, she's fasting. So it had, I had to work out the timings around my job. Uh, so for three days, uh, I fasted. I thought, I'm never going to do this. I love my food. Um, but actually, I really, really enjoyed it and was really disappointed when I had to eat at the end of it. So you, 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 Go on, uh, you're going to ask me yeah, questions. Because you know more, far What's more about this here? than me. This is wrong. No, so uh, <laughs> did you drink? Alcohol. No, any, oh. anything. <laughs> So, so what, I, were you, what, what, you didn't go three days with absolutely no, no intake? No, so I drank water and black coffee. So black coffee doesn't have any milk in it. Where do you stand on the soup issue then? I'm more, I would rather drink juice than soup. The, okay, so the whole thing for me is, if you're starting out fasting, uh, you have to do it sensibly. Yeah. So don't start out by doing three days. But you have to work out what's right for you. So what is right for me may not be right for somebody else. For me, I see soup as a meal. I see that as food. So I, I wouldn't have soup because I'd be having loads of tins of Heinz. And it, it's just personally, I wouldn't do that. But I think for some people, they need juice, and that's OK. For some people, they need milk in a tea or a coffee. I think that's OK. It's more about your heart for me. I, again, I wouldn't want to be legalistic, but I chose to just have water and black coffee um, because that's what felt right for me. And my black coffee was decaf as well, so before somebody says, oh, but you had all the caffeine to keep you going, I don't even have caffeine in my blinking tea. Coffee. Yep, so I, so I literally just had water. See, I, 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 my fasting is probably not fasting then. So it's your heart. I don't I think it's I that. couldn't manage without... I just go for liquids only. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean by liquids? Uh, soup. I would have soup. That's okay. That's okay. And I'd have, and I'd have milk in my caffeinated coffee. But that's okay. That's uh, you. That's not a problem. I don't have milk in coffee anyway. I, I don't know if I've ever fasted now. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but the other thing, the other thing is that I would uh, definitely go. Um, I don't know what you think about this, but I would start about seven in the evening, so after my evening meal, yep, and go all the way through. I would tend to go all the way through to lunchtime the following day, yep. 
So it's a bit more than 24 hours. But yeah. Quite a lot of soup gone on. <laughs> no, I have one, one cup. Of, I have it out of a cup, so it feels like I'm drinking. Do you have a little bit of bread with it? No. Dunk it in. <laughs> no croutons. <laughs> but for me, that doesn't bother me because I do think it's about your heart. Yeah. It, why, why are we doing this? It, it's not about all of those human things. It's about, oh, I'm after your heart, God. Whether that's for me, whether that's for somebody else, I'm after you. And when I fast, uh, I find it really, um, it really lifts my mood, which is weird because I'm, I'm normally quite a hangry person. If I'm hungry, I'm not good. Um, but there's something about, this is about me and God, that takes away that kind of like hunger and angriness that I normally get. Um, it just changes my whole perspective in a day. It's like, okay, God, this is me and you today. I can't get through day two without food. So me and you, mate, we're in this. And I love that. I like a challenge. I'm, I'm, we're going to do this, God. So it was easier. I found it really easy to do three days, and I loved it. And I was wow. so disappointed when I ended it. I felt that after four, I had just said four days without speaking to anyone. Mm, there you go. But we're doing the same thing, but just differently. Well, and that's just, okay. That's easy for me. You did it with soup and a roll and a pot noodle. Do you have a pot noodle? No, what, when I'm fasting? No. <laughs> no, when, when you were out doing your, your solitary confinement thing, did you have a pot noodle? Because that's your thing, isn't it, last, when you go camping? No, the last week, I, all I had was uh, sandwiches for four days. What? That's all you ate for four days? Yeah, sandwiches. Uh, this isn't about your eating habits. I'm going to move on because I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to just dive in there with a million questions about your eating habits. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about, let's say somebody has never fasted. Mm. Let's begin like to... Me. Like me. No, no, <laughs> no. Let, let's begin to explore. Mm -hmm. um, there's some important principles. I remember mm. a friend of a friend fasted, just become a Christian, fasted for 40 days because someone told her Jesus did and that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, not me, and not from around here. And at the end of it, um, she hadn't been drinking enough water. And so her, it really damaged her eyes. Uh, and there's lots of important things that we need to remember when we're fasting. The first is to make sure you drink plenty of fluids. Absolutely. Soup included, whatever it is, um, because actually it's really detrimental to every part of our health. But her eyes were really, really affected. She hadn't drunk enough after. She didn't eat at all. Because, I mean, not, I no. always understood that a 40-day fast is like Ramadan. You, you just have one meal a day in the evening. No. You talk to some hardcore people in our church that do that. They don't eat in the evenings. So they would go 40 days just yep. on, on water. That's when you add in the juices and things because your body needs yeah, certain yeah, nutrients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your pot noodle and your soup. <laughs> no, no, because that's solids. <laughs> what, a pot, a pot why noodle? am I being asked about this subject that I clearly am useless at? I couldn't imagine going more than 36 hours without f food. I... And it depends what kind of job you've got as well. I, I think of the footballers or the cricketers in high heat that when they're fasting, that's incredible. Even just for a 24-hour period or... For the daylight hours, you think, how on earth do you maintain that? It's about being sensible. And the first thing, other than drinking, you have to think about is, medically, is this okay for me to do? So if you're going to fast for any length of time, talk to your doctor. Talk to somebody about it. Don't just think, I'll be okay because no. God is in control. Absolutely. I think and it's don't wonderful. feel you have to compete with other people. You don't have to be as good as you. You only have to go be as good as me. <laughs> Those thick soup. <laughs> but I think we're talking about food fasting. Mm. For some people, they can't food fast. Absolutely. We used to have an elder that couldn't food fast mm. because uh, he was diabetic. Mm. He used to be very creative in the different things that he would give up during that, that period. Yeah. Again, we, I keep going back, it's about your heart. Mm. It's not about the outward manifestation. I'm cutting out this and this and this because then you do get really legalistic. I do think cutting out the phone, yeah. cutting out social media, cutting yeah. out television... Those kind of things really beneficial, really beneficial. But cutting them out with a purpose. Mm. So I would always say replace that which you have cut out with time with God. Whether that is listening Absolutely. to a podcast, yeah. whether that's reading your Bible, listening to some worship music and praising. You know, it's not just sitting in silence and having a Bible study. There's loads of creative yeah. ways otherwise you're going to get bored and give up. But for me, that's the key. You're giving something up and you're putting God 
into that place. You, you're saying, God, I want to meet you. I want to connect with you. I want to pray about this. This is in my heart, whether that's India or COVID or, or me, whatever, whatever mm. that might be. But I think you're right. You, there's loads of things that we can. And it may be that some people, probably now is not the time, but some people perhaps have been too people orientated and spent too much time with other people and have been afraid to be on their own although we've been forced to be on our own the last year. But if we get back into that place to actually say, hold on, I need to withdraw. I, I need to just be with God. So there are lots of ways that we, we should encourage people. Hmm. But if you are going to food fast, check it out medically that it's okay. And so I would definitely start small. Do not step out to do 40 days. No. Step out to do... One meal. One meal. Yeah. Absolutely. Set out to do one. If you're a three meal a day, yep. set out to do one meal a day, uh, to drop one of those. Yeah. And build yourself up if you find that works and, and two days or one day or... I mean, he's got lots of advice in there. So he's a little bit like going into the jungle with I'm a celebrity. So when they go into the jungle, they say to them, for two weeks beforehand, you need to cut out lots of fatty food and you need to be eating more rice and beans and stuff, smaller portions to prepare your stomach for what it's going to be like when you go into the jungle. And I think if you're thinking of doing a longish fast, you're better off thinking about it and preparing your body for it so it's not a huge shock. Now, I didn't do that for three days, obviously. I still, you know, stuffed my burgers and everything beforehand. Um, but if you're thinking about doing it for longer, look into it, research it, read Mr. Foster's book, because there's, you've got to look after your health. There's no point just saying, God's going to protect. I'll be all right because I'm a Christian, because it doesn't quite work. And I think like it that. is a calling. It's, it's something that some Christians might do. I, I, I cannot envisage myself fasting for that length of time. But I think it's, if it's something that God puts on your heart, and I think that that's one of the things that's really important is to have your own sense of where God is with you and what yeah. he's asking and leading you into it rather than trying to copy other people. Never copy other people. And I think there are different seasons as well. So there's seasons where it might be more prevalent in my life to fast, and that's great, and I'll go with it. And there are other seasons where it may be the emphasis is on another way of me connecting with God, and that's okay. But I would encourage everyone to just give them a go in a, in a right and healthy and safe so environment. So what other things have you fasted? What other things have I fasted? From, other than food? Television. Uh, and I've fasted from my phone. Uh, I've fasted from music for a bit. Um, I looked at things that were really important to me and that spent, I spent quite a lot of time doing. And, and I thought... The, do these take a, a bigger place in my heart than God? Um, if God said to me tomorrow, Kathy, you can't watch Netflix and any more box sets, how would I respond and what would I fill that time with? Um, and, and it's kind of a bit of a, for me, a bit of a test of, Kath, where is your heart? Where, where are you and God? And what are some of the things that I think I spend too much time doing that aren't helpful? Like, do I spend too much time watching box sets on Netflix? Could I be using that time more productively? It's, it's a kind of um, litmus test for me and God in my life. And, Kath, how productive is your life being at the moment? Wow. Yeah. I don't... My, my life isn't very productive at the moment. Neither is mine. I'll give up football from <laughs> August... When, when is the end of the season? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give up football then. So could you give up going to watch Caleb or Cambridge... <laughs> I'm not saying you have to I'm just asking a question I would find it immensely difficult because for me it's one of the few moments in the week when I don't think about problems and mm -hmm. worry about things that are going on in mm -hmm. the life of the church and it, it's like a, it's a moment when my brain is focused on something else mm -hmm. and I believe I find that incredibly healthy mm -hmm. Mm. and helpful for me. Um, yeah, you see, I don't think you should just cut your arm off to be legalistic and say, because I love it, I shouldn't go to football. Uh, for me, that's not what God's asking mm. at all. I don't think God says, give up everything that's 
that you really enjoy and gives you life. Although there is a bit in the Bible that talks about giving up sex to fast, isn't there? But we're not going into that because of the look on your face. <laughs> Let's talk about sex. Let's move on. You normally are the one that likes to talk about sex in the ladder, but we're moving on. What is happening to us tonight? We've lost the move plot on. completely. Um, any other advice for somebody thinking about fasting? I think the key thing is that this doesn't earn us love. Yeah. That we are precious and loved. And, and that's the distinctive of Christianity, that everything we do is a response to what God has done mm -hmm. rather than to get him to like us. Mm -hmm. He already loves us. He mm -hmm. shaped and created us and breathed life into us. He's come among us as Jesus. He's come and died on the cross and said, just receive my forgiveness. What mm -hmm. I want you to do is repent. That is already in place. Therefore, what we do is a response to that, mm -hmm. not a, a requirement to earn it or gain it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where I, I feel a sadness for other forms of Christianity and other faiths where people are uncertain as to whether God likes them mm -hmm. and hoping that if they can pummel themselves, if they can really do something difficult to themselves, that that will in some way make them good enough for God. Mm -hmm. And that, we don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. We are good enough for God. He just longs for us to turn to him and say, mm -hmm. I'm sorry just longs for us to repent and then his grace and mercy flies in mm. and then we find ourselves saying I want to spend more time with mm. you I want to give up this meal yeah. because I want to spend time I want to give up Netflix because I want mm. to spend more time with you I want to give up the phone because I want to spend more time with you I want mm. to think about giving up football because mm. I want to spend more mm. time with you mm. what, and that's a response not a requirement yeah, and I think sometimes we may have asked for forgiveness, um, but we just don't feel it. And so in that moment, for me, fasting isn't the, I'm proving to you that I'm worthy of it. The fasting is allowing more time and space for God to meet us in that place and to reassure us and affirm us and to help us. Because I think so often we don't allow him to do that. On Sunday, uh, Laurie and Alison were co-hosting with me at the 8.30, and they were asking me, what, do, what did I love about Jesus? I was recounting a story of last week. Last week, I felt like the worst Christian in the world, the worst church leader. Uh, I hadn't done anything spectacularly bad, but you know, sometimes you just think, oh, Kathy, you're just rubbish. And I was in a hangry mood, probably. It was just... Bleh. And I was on a Skype call to a, a friend of mine. She goes, how's, how's your walk with the Lord? And um, oh, I'm like, it's just rubbish. I feel rubbish about myself and everything and just feeling really, really down. And so she said, well, why don't we just stop for a moment and why don't you just ask Jesus what, what he wants to say to you right now? Well, I'm, I was like, what, do something about it rather than stop moaning, really? She's like, yeah, it'll be good for you. I'm like, mm, okay. So, you know, I'm a little bit... Mm. So I sit there and I'm like, you know, Jesus, I'm really struggling. I, I, I don't feel worthy I don't feel good enough um, I went through this whole list of why I was rubbish uh, and I said and so I'm just gonna sit here and if there's anything that you want to say to me do it and I wasn't particularly full of faith in expecting any response but the response that I got in just that moment of me allowing him time to connect with me was I love you just I love you and just felt this sense of his presence and his love and I felt this is so undeserved. I've really not, you know, I feel like I've not been great, but you still love me. But the key was allowing that, stopping, stopping moaning and allowing that moment of me just saying, what is it that you want to say to me? Um, and for me, fasting's like that. And the disciplines are like that. It is just stepping back from everything in life and saying, this is how I feel would you meet me in this place and would you speak into it? Mm. Not that I'm twisting your arm, not that you now think I'm this holy person because nothing's changed. I've not suddenly become this wonderful Christian overnight, but because of Jesus, you look at me and you think, she's mine. I love you. I want to encourage you and I want to speak into your life. 
So I kind of think for me that's the blessing of fasting. You're giving yourself time for Jesus to say, I love you and, and meet you in that place. And I'd encourage anyone to give it a go that can do Brilliant. any of these things. Anything else you want to say? No, I think you summed it up perfectly. Talk about soup, pot noodles. Can we say thank you ever so much for joining with us this evening? We have been a little bit all over the place and a little bit rambly. Hope that some of it made some sense. Again, just a reminder, this is the book, uh, Richard Foster, Celebration of Discipline. Deb might still have a few copies left that you can borrow. Do email qol at scbc.org.uk if you would like to borrow one of hers.